Basically, I said, you're doing what I'm always preaching on the show. You took something negative, something that was friction and, and hurting you in your life, your autoimmune disease, and we'll talk more about that. And you turned it around and you used it to sort of propel your momentum and your happiness and your life and your career yeah. and I'm sure financially and, and um, you're getting to help other people. So why don't you tell us about kind of where the press of it, where this all began, kind of just give, a, give us a, you know, a brief background of your story and leading up yeah. to this moment and then where we're headed in the future with it all. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I did not set out to try to do the lemonade out of lemons thing, the, the cliche. Yep. I, I didn't intend for it to turn into what it has. Um, but in a nutshell, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called ulcerative colitis, uh, very similar to Crohn's disease when I was 22. And spent years and years really sick and on really high doses of medications in and out of hospitals. And finally, ultimately, very long story short, uh, found that food could manage my day to day symptoms, not cure it because the autoimmune diseases are not curable. And it has not been a perfect journey, which I wrote extensively about in the new book. Um, but that it could really give me a better quality of life. And so I started blogging mostly just to tell my mom, my sister and my grandma, you know, what I was doing. <laughs> Love it. That's um, how all these great stories always start out. It was for you, right? You yeah. did it for yourself and to help you and, and to others around you and let them know what's going on. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then it grew and it grew and then really it turned into a passion to try to help other people. And that's kind of that's where it that's where it started. So okay, so when did this autoimmune disease kick in? And, and like, how did it negatively like what were the repercussions of it. Oh my. Yeah. So my husband and I had just gotten married. Uh, I got, I went into the ER about eight weeks after our wedding and, you know, specifically with ulcerative colitis, it affects your digestion, but you also can't absorb nutrients. And I was severely anemic. And so I had just this slew of side effects that did not allow me to live the quality of life that I dreamt as, you know, a postgraduate from college, newlywed, like, you know, when you're 22, you've got your whole life very planned out. And it's, of course, it of course looks very rosy. You just don't know that a lot of things can go wrong in your adult life and you think everything's going to be great. So right. very quickly, it, it took away a lot of the ideals that I had about, you know, working and starting my first job. And my husband was in law school, but I had all these dreams of, you know, hosting and cooking for people like my grandma and my mom did. And it all felt like it just disappeared overnight when I was diagnosed. Man, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, one of the, health is one of those things where it's just so easy to take for granted. Right? It definitely like is. You wake up yeah. and you're healthy every day. So what am I, what do I need to be thankful for? But part of, part of what I, I think when something like this happens, I mean, it's inevitable. It, it, it's, it, it just, it changes your entire perspective right. on yourself, the world, the planet, right. life, right. as you know it. And in a way, you almost want something like this to happen to everybody. Yeah, but not, is, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and just at least to to be able to like get that wide awake opening feeling of like, wow, like life is short. Like, what yeah. am I doing with mine, and what do I want to do moving forward with it? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't wish what I have gone through on anyone, <laughs> but it right. certainly it it's certainly great to know that there are other people that have experienced it, you know. And and I think that's the truth, right? When we learn that maybe. Some of us younger than others, but at some point we all learn that we are never going to be able to live a life without hardships. And that's what Food Saved Me, this book is about, is about going through those really difficult times, but what we do with them that gives them purpose and meaning and what we take, you know, once we get out of the deep, dark times, like what learnings and what lessons we've learned through going through that and how we can not only help better ourselves, but how we can try to impart what we've learned on those around us. Because even if they haven't gone through something yet, they likely will. And if you can try to teach and try to just, you know, guide somebody that's going to go through that or that's going through it, I feel like it, it gives it all a little bit more purpose and hope, honestly. For sure. So, okay. So, so you're working through it and, and you're blogging and, you, and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're working on your own. So at what point did it <laughs> translate to you realize, you know, this is helping other people and yeah. I can help. And, and you got that warm and squishy, which I know you got <laughs> because we, whenever we, we go out, we're, we're doing something that we know is helping others. There's no better feeling, right? There's so, no better feeling. And at what point did you feeling. realize that that was, that's what, that was the case? 
I will never forget reading, going back and checking the blog and looking at comments. And, you know, I'd like see my sister, Lisa and my mom. And then there was this name that I didn't recognize. And she left a long, you know, like four or five paragraph comment about not only had the recipe, you know, given her hope that she could enjoy food again, but she explained, you know, that she had rheumatoid arthritis and that it was helping the way that I was cooking and the recipes were helping her manage her symptoms and that a lot of her pain had gone away. And um, I think the specific story, she said she was able to go off of the debilitating medications. And I just remember reading it and thinking like, oh, wow, I didn't even know anybody was looking at this blog that I didn't know, you know, let alone being helped by the recipes. I thought that the way that I was cooking was really just for like Crohn's colitis, celiac, you know, so to hear this other autoimmune disease that at the time, I didn't even know what rheumatoid arthritis was. It just gave me this, this new kind of passion to think like, wow, there's other people out there that are sim like similar to me and that are suffering, but that really want to enjoy food. And I, I do remember that like pivotal moment of, of somebody that I didn't know, <laughs> just some stranger. <laughs> so can I just, this is, I love this stuff because this is, you're starting out, you're trying to build momentum with what you're doing yeah. and you look at all these people and they have like hundreds of thousands, millions right. of followers. Right. That's not how it starts. No, it starts never. With one, right? <laughs> yes, and, yes. and people have like just they just they want it all and they want right. it now. We're in this instant right. generation, and like that's it. Like it's just one. And I have I've had similar experiences. Like it's just one or two people, and then it starts yeah. to grow and grow, and then that inspires you, and you're like, okay, wait a minute now. Yeah. Like, and that helps to push push you down the path as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it, you know, it keeps you really tethered to your core values and your core mission. I think when you're, you know, like I said, I didn't start out to set a business, but as it, or to start a business, but as it did start to grow, that's been the core of it all going back. Everything I do, every recipe I create, every book that I write, every Instagram live, it's always going back to how can this help somebody? How can it help somebody feel like, you know, I'm walking through it with them? How can it help bring joy back to somebody's kitchen? Uh, and how can it help them heal their bodies? You know, I don't, I always say, I don't do this for myself. I don't, I don't need to write thousands of recipes, you know, in a book for me. I could scribble those out and be fine. And so these, every recipe I create is, is in, in an effort to try to make people be able to have joy in the food that they make and can, you know, continue to have community and to feel well. Yeah. And I love it. And right. And it, you know, that, that you're addicted now to that feeling of helping <laughs> others, right. And it helps to, to spur and, and to push you and, and like how good of a feeling is it knowing like these little recipes that you've created and came up with are now not only taste good, but are helping other people. Um, Awesome. I love it. It's, it's yeah, it's pretty incredible. And actually in the new book, I, I got to include like 500 stories from other people. And we've Ooh. been doing kind of a series too on my Instagram. I mean, a wonderful, I, I think heroic mother shared a story yesterday about her son with sensory processing disorder and how, you know, finding the recipes and starting to make those as healed as bodies. Somebody else shared their story last week about nearly being in a wheelchair with multiple sclerosis and how she's thriving and walking. And so getting to also be their voices I think is another just it's an honor for me but getting to share those stories of hope yeah I'm just I, I don't still know how I got to be able to do what I get to do but I I'm thankful for it so tell us yeah so this new book it, it's out or it's about it's out it came out last uh, a week ago yeah a week okay. ago Tuesday and then give us the rundown so people at home that maybe haven't read it yet yeah pick it up yeah, well, so it's called Food Saved Me, and it's really just about my journey of, you know, being diagnosed, how I came to love, re to re-have a love for food again, um, and how I moved through those difficult times and found hope through them, and, and also what the process was to go through that I found to figure out what foods worked for me, you know, and it's my first non-cookbook, but it's written as just showing every piece of my journey, you know, the bads, the goods, the ups, the downs, everything, and, and trying to pull the things that I learned from each of those setbacks and each of the bumps, the losses, the grieving, and how we used those to move forward and yep. to let us, you know, to let it strengthen us and not let it completely destroy us. I think, you know, a diagnosis at 22 could very easily have just taken me out and, you know, left me just kind of at its mercy for the rest of my life. But I fought and became an advocate for my own health and also just for that life that I wanted. And I really wanted to show all of that in the book so that others that were walking through it could, you know, be inspired to, to keep fighting for the life that they want. And also to feel like if they have bumps and setbacks, that they're not alone in it. And there, there may not ever be this perfectly tied bow at the end of an autoimmune disease or chronic illness journey, but it's 
continuing to take those steps forward that matters. Right. And so, and that's what a big theme of this, what I teach yeah. and we talk about on, on these podcasts. It's like, I mean, that's what people want to hear. They want to hear the personal story and, and, and just and be able to connect with you and, you know, yeah. obviously your recipes and three time bestselling author. I mean, that's your, your <laughs> clearly have that part nailed. And so now people, it's, it's great that you're doing that and people connect with you, you and kind of relate to you and see your story and, and, you know, the different obstacles. Because it, just like we were talking about earlier, it doesn't happen overnight and there's always yes. just so much and there's so many challenges and people just all of a sudden they see somebody and they've got all these followers and they're three time best selling author. God, how, how, how lucky of her to have gotten this autoimmune disease. And, and you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah, on, right? it, yeah. It, it can be really isolating to see every, to, especially on social media to when it looks really perfect you know, to everybody. And even myself, like I, I cataloged a, a setback I had in 2019 of being in the hospital. And I was one of my own worst critics of like, well, if I can't do this perfectly, then I'm failing completely, you know, and, and I just wanted people to know that you will have failures and you will have setbacks. And, I, and it has not been perfect for me. It looks glossy, you know, on a lot of photos and videos and things. But here's, here's the real story, because I don't yeah. want you to ever compare yourself to perfection, because it's not it's not possible. Well, thank you for being on that side of things and, and showing the real you and, and right not just trying to put up this front, like yeah. everything's perfect. And, and because nothing is and failure no. is mandatory. We were just talking about this on our last podcast as well. It's not just important. It's mandatory. Right. You right. cannot proceed. You cannot learn, pivot, grow, become that person you want to be and, and accomplish your goals if you don't fail. Yeah, exactly. And I always said this too, for me, you know, uh, first of all, opening yourself up and showing all your failures is a very scary place to be in. You open yourself up for critics and for, you know, negative negativity. But I think that the overwhelming response is, is always positivity. And I think you just have to kind of let some of that go. For me, you know, I always say when I do have the setbacks, when I do have to go, this, this last time was the first time I was hospitalized for 10 years. But going through that again, just it reignited kind of the empathy that I have for people that are going through difficult times. And when you, you know, when, when you do get to the top of the mountain and you forget to look back down, you forget what it's like to go through it. And so while I hate that you have to have, you know, failures and setbacks, it also helps make your heart open for, you know, to feel what everybody else is feeling that's going through those difficult times. And how many, how many people, you know, are diagnosed, with this roughly in the, I guess, US and then the world. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'd, I looked recently, I forget about my specific disease, um, but 50 million Americans have autoimmune wow. diseases. Yeah, and, and a, the overwhelming majority of those are females. That's just the United States. So the world is, is much higher. And, you know, it's not even just diagnosed autoimmune diseases. First of all, a lot of people are not diagnosed. You know, they, they go through tests and tests and tests and can't get answers. But there's also just chronic ailments and chronic illness that people live with day to day that can be helped with in an anti-inflammatory diet. So yeah, so the number is, is astronomical. And so many of those people suffer in silence. They just, you know, they don't, they don't get to talk about what they're going through and they have to just push through their life without having that support. Well, that, there's, we were talking about the, the woes of technology earlier when I couldn't get the sound working, but now yeah. there, that's, the, that's the bright side of technology, yes. right? Yes. Being able yeah. to connect with all these people around the world like that. That's right, 100%. Be. Yeah, because it could be rare that you might, you know, find a friend that has what you have, but you can absolutely find community and support online, and, and that is huge. And so, yeah, speaking of that, how is your those people helped you. Oh. Obviously you're helping them a ton. You know, can you give some examples of how oh my gosh. they've had to push you through some of the tougher times? My online community that has formed over the last decade since I started doing this has become like family for me. I mean, I have a very strong and supportive husband that has walked through this with me and friends and family, but my online community who really understands what it's like has been just invaluable to me. I mean, I think I can, I can pinpoint so many times, but the letters that I get and those stories that I shared earlier, I mean, those keep me going when I feel like I'm doubting, you know, if food has worked, when I'm doubting that like I can get through a setback or when I'm just feeling run down from the negativity that comes at me, you know, it's like I am able to look back at how supportive and positive those people have been and read back. I save letters and pictures, especially when people send them, you know, their children that have found health, um, families that have been able to have kids that weren't, you know, I mean, just 
so much. And so I can read through those and it can just get me up, you know, from a hard day. And then just their support, you know, when I did have that setback, I was having major imposter syndrome and doubting everything that my work and kind of my mission had been for the last 10 years and getting to just hear from those people that just because I had a setback and a bump didn't negate everything that had, you know, helped them from my work in the last oh, 10 God, years. Yeah. I can it, imagine it was, that would be. Yeah. Huge. So yeah, I'm so grateful for them. Because there's all anybody that's 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 doing anything where they're trying to, you know, create something and, and whether it's a business and what you know, whatever it is. And obviously this has become probably a business for you, but that wasn't the original intention. Those are all right. the best businesses. So you, <laughs> yes. you know, the, the your your the, the purpose of it was to help and then now that's what yeah you know, you're doing it on a grander scale. But yeah, whenever people start with that in mind, it, it, right, it's always a tough road and it never kind of goes the way you think it's going to go. And you just right. got to sort of figure out a way to, to push through it. You do. You do. You have to gather whatever hope you can from around you, you know, or from past experiences to be able to get you back and get you back up on your feet. And being able to use those pe the people, your support network. I mean, because I sit in front of my desk all day, you know, we all have those moments, like we were just talking about failure and, and be down on yourself or, you know, something's not working or something happened, but then being able to just have them lift you up, right. and push you. And so that's, that's a message to everybody too. You don't have to have right. 400,000 followers, just yeah. find something you're super passionate about and whether it needs to relate to you, right. You don't yeah. want to go out and be like, this seems like it'd be a good thing and other people, right. I mean, it's su something super personal, super passionate. For and sure. combine it with your strengths if, if possible. Like you combine it with your, yeah. your love of cooking and, and writing and cookbooks, right? And that's where you create something. And you there will be other people out there that have yeah. the same yeah. view. And when you connect with that, it's just it's just magical. It is magical. I know. I'm very I'm grateful that I get to do what I do. It's no I never expected it. <laughs> so let's get so there's a few questions in here. Let's let's, yeah. let's take so uh, Rojas wrote, how does it start? What triggers it? We're just getting to learn about it. Yeah, it's autoimmune disease is a, it's a mystery from what I understand. You know, I'm not a doctor or scientist, but just from my personal experience, it came on overnight. All my doctors said they didn't know, you know, what might have triggered it. We do know for sure that stress can cause, you know, even if it's a like dormant disease that maybe you had, you know, hereditary wise, stress can cause it to come out and flare up. And we've seen that absolutely with, you know, my flares over the years, just not resting, not taking care of my body, eating things that I know that I are not great for it um, can cause those flare ups. But yeah, I mean, autoimmune can be hereditary. We have different autoimmune diseases in my family, you know, grandmothers that have different diseases than I do, but still in the autoimmune disease category. Um, and I think a lot of it can also start, you know, within the gut. And I get to write a little bit about that in Food Saved Me, just about how important having healthy gut, you know, bacteria microbiome is and taking care of, of our full wellness. Nice. Okay, well, good. Thank you. That was, that was a great answer for that. Another question we have from Rosari B6. Uh, <laughs> did you have to go through any elimination diets and reintroductions? Yes. So how did you mentally flip the switch to not be afraid of certain foods and have confidence in reintroducing foods? That's a great question. And it really does come down to mindset. I go through extensively and food saved me exactly what we did for elimination diets um, and, and how we added those things back in. There's guides in there and lists. And I kind of walk through the story of that. Um, so yes, I did. And when I did an elimination diet, I saw 75% improvement in my symptoms within days, 24, 48 hours. And so I think that helped me in terms of flipping the switch mentally of seeing how drastic the change was and how very clearly correlated it was to the things that I had cut out. But when adding new foods back in, you know, that mentality, I've always really tried to focus on all of the things that I can eat. You know, when I, when you go through and you say, I can't have this, 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 and this, it just becomes this very negative experience that I think can be really detrimental to your mental health. Um, I also don't feel like it's sustainable when you're focusing on the negatives, right? And so instead I go to, I can have all of these things and I can make cookies and cakes and cupcakes, you know, with these ingredients. And I just think that really helps just your overall mental health. Cause this is a lifestyle for me. This is not a 30 day sprint. You know, this is a, right. a journey and you have to keep your, your spirits in a positive, hopeful way as, as often as you can, obviously easier said than done to be able to sustain it. 
Right, which t- it ties to everything I always talk it about. It's a, it's a habit that you're forming. You're getting into it's. It's not you have a goal to lose ten pounds and then right. you're going to do it and then you're like, okay, I'm good and I'm going to go back to. It's a lot. You're you're changing your your brain chemistry of being like, okay, this is what we're doing and this is what we're eating and yeah. your brain starts to go, okay, yep, got it. We like yep. it. We're into it. Let's go. Let's do it. And then you're not even really thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you say in terms of days for, you know, making a healthy habit? Do you say 30 days, two weeks, you know, a year? Uh, What's your kind of? Yeah. The answer is people will try to act like they're experts on it, but there's no, science will tell you that there's no magic number. It's, it's just, you know, certain habits you can pick up very quickly and certain ones are going to just take longer depending on the person, depending yep. on the habit, depending on the resistance, yes. you know, a lot of factors go in. And so the key to any habit is just, you know, making a commitment to kind of faking it till you make it and just mm. sort of saying, okay, I'm going to keep doing this because I know it's, it's what I want. And then tweaking it along the way, like you said, like, okay, yep. well, using these ingredients and, and going with your biology and your physiology so that it's not like, you're, you're, you're fighting upstream, but instead yeah. you're reducing the friction to make it more amiable to you yeah. so that you're like, okay, this, this habit is now more attractive. I, I want to do this versus, oh God, I have to do this. I think that that's so wise. And I feel like it can apply to so many aspects of your life. I mean, I think, you know, we're talking business, but that is, I, I would echo all of that for changing the way that you eat and, and making, you know, your health and wellness a lifestyle. I think of that that's wise and makes complete sense. And I, I would, you know, in addition to that, I think, and you, you kind of said it, but I think you have to find your why, you know, people always ask me like how long it took me to commit to eating this way. And quite honestly, it was a while I would dip my toe and I'd fall back out and, you know, and it was just a hard mental barrier, but my why came when my nine month old son, you know, had to stay at home while I was in the hospital for a few weeks. And then I was bedridden and missed his first steps. And so my commitment came after realizing that I didn't want to miss any more of his life. And so I think that's like, you can commit to something or somebody can tell you to do something, but you have to have, you have to have the reason that pulls you back every time that, you know, you want to, to veer off. Love that. That's exactly right. And everybody's going to have a different why, right? Yep. Yep. Exactly. It's like, nobody, it it doesn't work. Willpower doesn't work because it runs out of steam. Like it runs out it it, by nature. It's, it's, it's an engine that you have to kind of keep applying force to and right, you can't right. apply force 24 seven. Eventually you're going to be like, you're going to let your yep. guard down and then yeah, it's going to be like, yeah. Oh, I want those uh, Cheetos, you know, let's go cookies. <laughs> Yeah, and that was the other thing I wanted people to read in Food Saved Me. This is my career. I've been doing this for 12 years. You know, you'd think, like, I have no problem sticking to things this after doing it this long, right? And and I do still have my why, and I know how important it is, but it also is still not perfect for me. There's still things thank where you. I'm, you know, seeing somebody eating it, and I'm like, I want that, or I'll be yeah, like, Yeah, oh, thank you for your honesty, bite. right. You know, and, and I that's, think that's important. That's... That, that is important to say that. And right, that's part of human nature. And, right. and there's, a, you know, like, I think part of our, speaking of physiology and biology, going back to our, our paleolithic selves, like the more calories we had, the better our chances of survival. So we were yeah. always constantly trying to find those fatty foods and sugars and things, right? Which is why now we've evolved society-wise where we can get that at at the click of a button and have it delivered yeah. within, within yeah. 10 minutes. But so now you have to sort of balance that, but it helps a ton when you do start just like you said, changing your lifestyle. And we we're talking about the habits of just, you know, all of a sudden this is your lifestyle. And it's like, yeah. and I think it's okay to cheat now and then I interviewed this bodybuilder one time and he was saying, you know, I kind of go with the 80, 20 rule. And he was in the best shape I've ever seen a human being could possibly look like there was there. And he's like 80% of the time I eat the way I'm supposed to. And, and I stick with my regimented diet. And again, he, he incorporated the things that taste. We're lucky that we're living in a world where we can get just about anything. Right. So it's like, you don't have to be like, Oh, well that tastes like crap. Like you, if you experiment around enough, find the stuff that works for your taste buds and, and it's right, right. healthy and stuff. Right. And so, but then he's like 20% of the time, I just kind of, I eat what I want. 
I wish I had that freedom. I think, I wish, you know, I think for people with autoimmune and celiac, things like that, right? It's like, there's not that choice. And and unfortunately for me, if I were to choose the 20%, I would pay for it. (laughs) Right, I'm sorry. Um, You know, but but no, but it's true though. And I, yeah, and I think it is, I mean, it's, that's a healthy mentality if you can. I think that's, that's the nice thing. Um, But I do agree though, even in the sense of, you know, I make paleo cookies and I make paleo muffins and cupcakes and those are kind of my 20%. Like I still, there you go. Right. Grain-free, you make it fun. Free. You reduce yes. the friction by, yes. and you're tricking your brain into being like, yeah, this is a, a real cupcake, right? right. And then it exactly. starts to taste at first. I'm it sure does. the very first yeah. one you, you might've made was not the same as right. Uh, yeah. but then your brain starts to go, okay, yeah, this is what a cupcake did. My dad cannot to yeah. this day. He can't eat sugar very early on. His parents for dessert, they would have fruit and that's all they would have. And so sugar is so sweet to him now. Yeah it's too sweet. Like he, he can eat fruit. And then that was the habit he got in early on. And I'm like, yes, yep. that's it. That's it. That's amazing. I know. But yeah, it's great. That's kind of the way my kids are with real sugar. They get honey and maple syrup and stuff. But when they get a real treat with, you know, white processed sugar, that's the same way they can eat a couple bites. And then they're just like, I'm good. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So let's go back to a few questions yeah. here. Yeah. 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 So, well, Sarah says, is your whole family grain free? My son has been diagnosed with leaky gut. We have celiac and have been gluten-free for seven years. And now we know he has leaky gut. We were trying to do grain-free. So yeah, my family is, uh, you know, they're hundred percent gluten-free. Um, her, like I said, autoimmune disease can be hereditary. So for us, it's a preventative measure of keeping them gluten-free and, you know, free of refined sugars, food dyes. And then I would say they eat paleo and grain-free about 80% of the time. Um, everything that I make, all the muffins and cakes and all those and dinners, you know, most of that, but they can tolerate some rice. They do some white potatoes, which I can't do, but my husband and them do. And then occasionally like a, a packaged, you know, gluten-free cracker or, or thing like that when I need to send them to school. But I do think, especially with a young child that's seven, having the whole family on board, if possible, is just going to be your best chance at, you know, success and survival. It's so hard for a child to sit across the table and watch everybody else eat something that they can't have. So, you know, specifically with leaky gut too, I feel like that's, there's a process of healing and then hopefully you can be able to add some more foods back in. But yeah, um, we try to kind of all eat the same thing here at our house. It just makes it easier on, on me as the cook too. But in just in a support, you know, in, in a proactive way to keep my kids healthy and not have them diagnosed with what I have. Excellent. Thank you. Right. And, and kind of you mentioned that 80, 80, 20 rule came into play a little bit there. How do you get a leaky gut diagnosis? Oh boy. I need one um, that's from mama with a purpose. Yeah, I was going to say, I may let other people answer that in the comments, because I would not say I'm an expert on that. But I do think working with a functional medicine practitioner and having a series of full blood panels and stool tests done is is typically the way that people get that um, diagnosis. And then they can help you kind of figure out how to how to help handle it. And then Abby Math was saying, okay, so kind of going to our 80-20 convo, she was saying, um, how long did it take you to get good at grain-free baking? Cooking makes yeah. perfect sense, but making it is a struggle. <laughs> At 20% fun foods is hard when you suck at baking. That's a great, that's a great uh, yeah, comment. That's a great question. Uh, so you'll read in Food Saved Me about all of my flops. I did not go to culinary school, first of all. And even if I did, they use, you know, flour and sugar and butter and things that I wouldn't have been able to make. So my beginning days were a lot of trial and error. And there were a lot of things that did not taste great. And, you know, now getting to do this and having written four cookbooks and 2000 plus recipes. I feel like I've got it down to an art. So I first of all think you just need to follow the recipes to a T with grain free baking if it's not something that you're used to and they should turn out for you. And look to make sure that you know you're using the same ingredients and and brands and products that I recommend because that's going to give you the most foolproof results if you're using what I use in my kitchen. Yes, I mean cooking regularly like dinners that is a little bit easier you can take any recipe you can find on the internet you know or your favorite cookbook and typically cut the the grain out of it you know and serve the protein and the vegetable but the baking is tough and those ingredients are not cheap so i understand the like hesitancy you know to want to try something new but i do think the recipes you know look for ones on my site that have the five stars the cookbook ones always have really great reviews i think it's a good place to start and do a few you know until you feel like you've got the hang of it and then you can kind of have some fun playing around well, it sounds like you need to add to your repertoire of your business and what you're doing to help people a food delivery prep, oh my prep gosh. meal type thing. I, I just, that's what came I love to my that. mind. 
because yeah. you know, I, I, that's what I used to, that was my business that I, I built and sold was, it was, well, it was a restaurant delivery service. So we yep. partnered with restaurants like a Grubhub or an Uber yep, yep. Eats or, or a DoorDash. And, but you know, I'm, but there, you know, there's so many of these, these ones out there, but I, is there one that is dedicated to, to auto? Not home? really. And not a very great one. Um, that is a hope actually at some point we did do, we started uh, cooking and baking courses, d digital courses this last year to teach people who do want to cook in their kitchens, how to do it successfully. But I, there's a lot of people who don't have time, who have no, interest no, yeah. in cooking I, or no, baking. I like, I wouldn't, I'm not, a, yep. I, I, I mean, cook. my husband's the same way. Yeah. He's the same way, but they want to eat well. Happen. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I right. think at some point I would, I would love to do that. There are a few things you can find in the grocery store, but yeah, having something show up at your doorstep would be a dream of mine one day, one day. One day. <laughs> okay. Well, good. There's a good, yeah. there's a good goal to have. So there, yeah. and in the meantime, you see, you wouldn't recommend even having this person look at what else is out there because they're not very I good. Just don't, well, I don't really, I can't, honestly, I don't know any off the top of my head that do mm. full, you know, like grain free and especially baking. I know there's some, there was some meal delivery services, but I don't even know. I'd have to go back and look it up. I can try to comment on it because I don't, I don't well, actually uh, know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, but I mean, that is an option and maybe, um, yeah, yeah, Google. Rojas Pola asked, is saying that they went to go look for this book at Target. It's actually not in Target stores. It's on Target.com. So you won't find it there. But Barnes & Noble, your local independent, Amazon, you know, all of those places. So sorry that you went on a, on a goose, God, wild who goose goes chase. into Rojas? You went into an actual <laughs> store to buy a book like, whoa. <laughs> I love that. Are you like the last <laughs> remaining one left in the world? <laughs> you know what? We, we love, like, I'm like, we women love to just peruse Target. So I would, I would do the same. I'd be like, I'm going to go to Target and then I'm going to go to the book section. I'm also a book lover. So I do love to go to bookstores. But yes, I know going into a store these days with that immediate, like curbside delivery or, or front porch delivery. It's a dying yeah. breed. I know. It is. It Amazon is. and all these, right. It's, it reminds me of like the hardware stores. Once in a while, yeah. you know, you'll still, still yes. see one hanging on. But yes, and they're and so Lowe's. sweet to go through. Oh, well, like the local hardware stores I love because they have like decorations and games, oh, and, you know. Yeah. And I have said that, you know, to all of the people too, like local bookstores are hurting. They, they were hurting before the pandemic, but those poor bookstores had to close and haven't sold, you know, nearly enough books because of all of the online retailers. So I do try to encourage supporting your local, local, local shops in general, but those bookshops, if you need a copy, go get it from them. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. I just maybe think we have this local, right? Any, any of your local businesses yeah, that can yeah. apply to, right? Just with everything going on, everything. Um, you got to support. You don't year. think about it. It's like, oh, well, just me. It's not gonna make a big difference. But if everybody does it and goes out yeah. and, and is supporting and right, I, I try to go to my local hardware store. It's so cute yeah. right here in Evanston, yeah. Illinois. And it's like this little old guy. And you know, he's got the and everything's, you know, it's everything's like twice as expensive, right? Because right. he's not getting right. the bulk discounts. But, you're, but you know, and I don't buy everything from there, uh, but yeah, you know, but once in a while, a little, little quick yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. So I, as we're wrapping up here, I always like to kind of ask, just kind of going back to the, we, you know, we talked about some habits and stuff yeah. and, and obviously the importance. Is there a habit other than obviously the eating that just in general in your life, it doesn't have to necessarily do with, you know, the autoimmune and, and all this stuff and what you're doing now, but that it's kind of helped, you know, your old self versus this, this person you are today and the person you want to keep moving towards and becoming that a habit that a failure habit that maybe you once had that you've been able to replace with a success habit? Oh my goodness. Uh, it's a loaded question. I, I know. I know. So take your time. Yeah. Gosh, I think honestly, I have had to learn the hard way over and over again. And even most recently as 2019, that I have to put myself and my health first. I think in the past I was, and I, and I still am, and I fall prey to it a lot, but I, I tend to kind of put myself behind everybody else. And that includes all of my, you know, readers and people that are following me and then my family and friends. And, and I can let my health go to the wayside mm. by trying to constantly be everything for everybody. And so I would say a healthy habit that I've gained, and especially during 2020, because I was forced to, <laughs> and I could not do all the things that I would have done normally. And so I didn't run myself into the ground and family was priority and sleep and rest were priority. And so I think I learned that again, you know, in this last year and a half of just how important it is to put myself first. And that's the habit that I'm going to try to stick to going back into normal life of, you know, traveling Good. again and working a lot. And, and all of that is that I have to take care of myself. 
Well said. And, you know, a lot of people, again, to, everybody has their own battles and things, and it just goes to show a lot, a lot of people, it's the opposite, right? They, they, right? they put themselves first. Well, I guess, in a way, we all tend to, I think, right, put some sort of aspect of our health or our happiness aside. But a lot of yeah. times, you know, we it's just me, 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 what can I do? But right, obviously, you're a very self, selfless person. And I can just see you wanting to help everybody that reaches out and every, and, and at some point it's just not scalable Yeah. and you're yeah. going to burn yourself out and it's going to be at the expense of your own happiness and health. So I'm glad you're able to recognize that and yeah. give me a lesson for everybody else watching at home as well. That's, you know, similar. I, I, and my wife is, the, is, is that way. And, you know, I think it goes to the whole being able to say no is, yeah. is part yes. of it. You know, we work on that. That's one of our yes. habits, you know, being yes. able to just say no, it's I okay. Know. It is. Like if it it's going okay. against what's going to make you happy and, you know, it just, it's okay to say no. People aren't going to hate you. No, they won't. They'll understand, I think. I think that is, so, it you. is. It's so healthy. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Well, thank you, Danielle, so much for coming thank on the you. show. Anything else? Any last words? Um, where You know, obviously your, your new book is out. Tell us yes. again the name of it. You can find like, it everywhere. Amazon Target. Yeah. So it's called Food Saved Me. It's probably going to be backwards, but yep. Food Saved Me. Every, yeah, every retailer just came out last week. If you know anybody that's suffering with chronic illness or autoimmune disease or you yourself have it or you're looking to know how to support support somebody. My husband actually wrote a chapter in the back of the book just about how to be the supportive, you know, spouse or loved one or, or person walking through it. But um, yeah, go grab it. Um, otherwise, you guys can follow me for recipes, you know, over on daniellewalker.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Danielle. This was an hey. absolute pleasure. I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was so good to talk to you. Absolutely. And we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Great questions, guys. That's it for the five core life. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button on this video and pound that subscribe button so you get notified when new episodes drop. Also, please fill out the free five core life evaluator quiz. It's a great way to get a baseline of where you are and the five cores and which of the five cores you need support. In addition, you'll get some actionable advice that you can apply and start improving your life in the areas that you need it most. That's it for today's episode of the five core life podcast. Have a wonderful day. Get moving, gain momentum, join the movement. Join Emmett by going to moremomentum.com to take a free life evaluator quiz on where you currently stand in each of your five cores. 